everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out the $59 Windows tablet from WinBook. And this you can only get at this price at the micro center stores, the brick and mortar stores. You have to actually go in uh, in person the old fashioned way and buy it from a clerk at the desk. But uh, you will get a really good deal on a very functional Windows tablet that runs Windows 8.1. This isn't RT or some reduced version of Windows. You can run uh, most of your Windows applications on here, which I think is pretty cool for this price. Now, this would be the ultimate tablet, except the fact that it only has 16 gigabytes of onboard storage. So once you have uh, you know, the device booted up and uh, everything installed, you know, the operating system and everything else, you only have got like five gigabytes of uh, actual usable space left over. So it's going to be very limited as to what you can put on here beyond what it comes with. And it really doesn't come with all that much. You do get the Microsoft Office 365 uh, one-year subscription uh, and a couple of other things but you're really going to be limited as to what you can put on here. So while it's capable of running a lot of things, it may not be able to store a lot of things on it. Uh, it does have a micro SD card slot here, so you can uh, augment some of that storage, but it might be difficult to get some of these uh, Metro apps on there. Now, what I really like about this tablet, unlike many of the other cheap ones we've looked at, is that they give you a lot of ports to do a lot of cool stuff with. So uh, what you've got here right off the bat is a regular USB host adapter, so you can plug in USB devices, pretty much any USB device, device, uh, plug in a hub and get a keyboard and mouse you know, hooked up or a whole bunch of other stuff that you'd like to use with it and you are good to go. And it has a micro SD, uh, micro USB slot here so you can charge the device at the same time. Now that is not you know, a big deal on a laptop, but we haven't seen a cheap tablet yet that would let you use USB devices and plug in a bunch of stuff and, by the way, connect an HDMI port also uh, to get your screen attached to it as well. So you can uh, switch off the display on this thing, plug everything in, and then use it like a little desktop, which I think is really cool. So this is a, a really complete device from the standpoint of ports, not so complete when it comes to storage. It only has, though, also a gigabyte of RAM, uh, much like some of the other tablets we've looked at. Uh, not a limiting factor, which I, I expected it to be on a lot of these devices, but if you're doing one thing at a time, it's really not all that bad uh, to just have such a little amount of RAM. You can load up web pages really nicely. You can see it scrolls wonderfully. It really renders quite quickly. Um, we can even pop over to uh, Netflix here. We'll just uh, do a little screen sw uh, swap there. Uh, we'll go hit Netflix and maybe flip it back around here, and uh, we'll continue watching a movie we were checking out before. Um, takes a little bit of time for it to buffer up, but not too bad, and your Netflix movies will play pretty much as nicely as they did uh, on the HP Stream 7 that we looked at a couple of weeks ago as well. So really capable device here that can do a lot of stuff and not cost a lot of money. So what I'm going to do next, uh, because this really does perform identically to every tablet we've looked at so far, it's got the same Bay Trail processor, uh, we are going to try using this as a desktop fully plugged in. So we're going to plug in power, we're going to plug in HDMI, we're going to plug in the keyboard and mouse and play some Minecraft on here and see how it looks on a big monitor. So let's get that stuff hooked up. All right, so we've got everything hooked up and we are charging at the same time, which again, remarkable for a cheap tablet. So we've got the HDMI driving the display here. Uh, we have a USB keyboard plugged into the USB port right here. And I also have a hub that's built into this keyboard. It's a little dirty, I know, uh, that we have a mouse connected to as well. So we're able to get uh, the keyboard and mouse working. As you can see, I can move my mouse around here and get everything hopping there. And we're charging at the same time. So you can see we've got the micro USB in here uh, charging the device. So now you'll notice when I switch over to the display that we've got about a half inch of a black border on both sides of the screen. And we can get rid of that by uh, basically unmirroring the devices. So basically what, what these things can't do, these Bay Trail processors, they just can't drive the full display and a 1920 by 1080 display at the same time. It's a memory issue among other things. So what we're gonna do uh, is go into our screen resolution settings and just uh, have this go only to the second display. And one thing I would suggest also unchecking is allow the screen to auto rotate. Uh, that way, I found sometimes when you move things around or uh, change apps, it'll sometimes uh, reorient the display to some weird uh, vertical thing. So disabling that uh, will make your life a lot easier. So we'll click apply here. And uh, what will happen is it will uh, rejigger uh, itself. And now we are at uh, 1080p. So we're going to keep these changes. And as you can see, uh, we're now at a full screen display, which is really cool. All right, now we're going to do something a little bit more fun than moving windows around, and that is running Minecraft, which I know everyone is always interested in seeing on these devices. So here we are 
Uh, it is performing pretty much where all of the other Bay Trail devices we've tested uh, performed at as well. So we're getting about, I'll pop up our frame rate here, about 30 frames per second, give or take, in the high 20s to low 30s. This is with the Optifine plugin, which is an optimization plugin you can download, uh, which will give you a better frame rate. So it looks uh, to be running really nicely here. I'll pop up my scaler so you can get a feel for uh, how it looks when you're just looking at the display directly. So really pretty nice here, and it runs really, really well. Now, I did change the resolution from 1920 by 1080 uh, to, I believe, 1360 by 768. And I did that uh, because uh, 1920 by 1080 just wasn't working. It was getting all distorted on my screen, and I just really couldn't get it to work. So uh, one of the things that will happen when you do plug this in uh, to a display and try to drive it at the full 1080 is it will warn you that that's not the ideal resolution for the device. Now, it's fine when you're doing word processing and web browsing, uh, but when you start doing 3D games and whatnot, I think you're going to want to uh, turn things uh, down a little bit on the resolution side uh, within Minecraft. So when you do that, look how nice it runs. It's certainly uh, more than usable on a $60 computer. And this is, again, the full you know, Windows version of Minecraft running in Java. Now, I am running with the Optifine plugin, and I've also uh, changed the graphics mode from fancy to fast, and that is how I am getting uh, this frame rate on here. So I think if you tweak it further, uh, you could probably get even better frame rates too. So if you're a Minecraft tweaker, I think you can really uh, get this working really, really nicely. And again, we're doing this all on a $59 PC. So that is the WinBook TW700, a really good value, not only for its price of 59 bucks, but also because you get all of these useful ports on it as well. So a really nice a little handheld PC at a price you really cannot beat at the moment. You just have to go again, buy it in person. Only issues I've seen with the display are just this little bleed through you'll see on the sides. Uh, again, very typical of uh, low end PCs, but it is an IPS display with a really decent viewing angle, as you can see here. So uh, you do get a little bit of bleed through, but beyond that, I think it's really great for $59. You really can't go wrong with it. So if you're, you know, if you're able to live with the one gig of RAM and the 16 gigabytes of storage, uh, $59 out the door, you'll be happy. They do have other ones there as well. I think they've got an 8-inch tablet that's a little bit uh, better on the storage, maybe on the RAM too. I have to check the specs again, but uh, that one might be worth looking at at $129. Again, uh, pretty reasonably priced. So uh, we'll see where this little tablet market is going. I'm going to con continue looking at these kinds of devices, uh, only showing you the ones that are really interesting now because we're seeing a lot of the same, especially on the performance side. So when I see something like this, I will certainly keep bringing them to your attention. But I'm going to start focusing a little bit more on some other products now too because I've been spending a little bit too much time on these tablets and I want to look at some other stuff. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.